it's the kind of thing they, they won they won they won the battle, but I'm gonna win the war. And maybe I will never get the settlement that I deserve because I can't find an attorney. I, I have I refiled my own lawsuit within the last year for two point five million against the city of Lompoc over this case because the police involved just won't leave me alone. Um, instead of arresting the real criminals in my case, um, I showed you this last time, Sheriff Oliver writes me a ticket two blocks from my home at like midnight at one in the morning or whatever for not stopping at a stop sign, you know, which is totally ridiculous. When I'm a victim of this violent police crime, why don't you go out and arrest this guy, Sheriff Oliver? This is the narc. There's his fake ID card. That's Alan Christopher. That's not his real name. His real name is Leonard Lehane, and there's his record. I showed this before. His record is, it was, I think it's up to three pages long, but if you read it, it says out of Bridgewater, Massachusetts, and numerous armed robberies, uh, one possession of heroin. Um, and, you know, this is the guy I was up against at, at, at 20 years old, newly married. And as everybody remembers, I'm a star baseball player from Cabrillo High School. So I was still trying to turn pro as a baseball player at this time. So that's who I was. And that's why, of course, she married me because I was an athlete. I was, there's how we looked at the time of the crime. I was, wow. I was 20 and she was can 18. Can we get a close up of this? Well, I was 20 in that picture, and she was 18. That's our prom picture. And we were married at 20 and 18. So that's, that's the exact time that I was protecting my 18-year-old wife from this undercover narc who was basically a Charlie Manson-type character. Yeah, and they and let him out of jail. They let him out of jail to, to use him to bust people for drugs. But as I, as I told in the first and second shows I was on, I'm the only one who knows the truth about this case. See, he never had any intention of busting anybody for drugs. He'd been in prison most of his life. We ought to decriminalize drugs. I think this whole thing is a racket. I mean, I don't, it like, is. I it don't is. like drugs. And I, I don't either. I don't do drugs either. I don't do drugs. I don't even do the drugs my doctor wants me to take to keep my cholesterol down. Right. So I won't my have a heart attack. I take legal drugs. You know, I don't even like the legal drugs. Uh, they want me to take three things. I, I'm only taking one, and I'm thinking of quitting that one. But well, I wanted to get to that in a minute about drugs. Well, we can talk that. Well, you know, Ron Paul's to running. Say about that. He would. He would. He's a doctor. Ron Paul is, is a not only a congressman. He's a doctor, and he would decriminalize these drugs. We just got a call. I'm gonna interrupt this. From let's see. Hello. We got a call. I got to tell you about another corrupt. Attorney. His name is Scott Rothstein. This is a call we just got here. Hello, Bob? Yes, I'm here. Bob, yes. the Scott Rothstein that stole, what, a billion dollars from his other Jewish One, buddies? $1.2 billion. He stole from innocent businessmen in, in uh, Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach County. $1.2 billion. He stole from this, uh, uh, on the trust accounts, phony scam operations, phony lawsuits. And then he flew to Morocco to hide some of the money and came back and turned himself in. Is that pretty much what happened? Well, the day they caught him, believe it or not, it was like on, on uh, Christmas Eve. I was coming back from uh, West Palm Beach, and I'm seeing all the, what, by the big law firm, and I see all these big tractor trailers and all this stuff, and all FBI agents running around, and they're... They're, they're ja FBI jackets, and they're running up and down the stairs, and, and they're running up and down the elevators. And they're taking all of the uh, filing cabinets and all the computers and desks and everything out. Yeah, out they took office. everything. This guy, this was a big time crook, and he was a member of the British Accreditation Registry, the Bar of Florida. This is Bob Bertrand calling in Florida. He's he's fought corrupt local corrupt stuff and. Miami, and we we have video of him. We only used a, we've only played a part of your interview, Bob. But that was like two years ago. Now he's been supposedly sequestered in jail and prison. And but before this happened, didn't his office manager get murdered? No, his office manager actually hired her ex-husband to murder one of the women lawyers that was going to squeal on them for stealing all this money. Isn't that so a nice? Just did a squeal on them if they didn't pay it back. So, so they they rewarded it with this uh, office man who had an ex-husband that was a thug. Yeah. And, so they, uh, they, they had went a. Down to the beach one Saturday, and uh, she was laying on the beach having a sun uh, uh, a suntan, and all of a sudden they um, they had a, this guy walked up to her and and shot her in the back and killed her right on the beach. On the beach. So this. In so what happened? The office manager got a. 
a four hundred and seventy thousand dollar home, free and clear, in Western Florida. These are attorneys. Who have to, do, to do this murder. Yeah, these are attorneys. Retired attorneys are hiring oh. people to murder other attorneys that were going to squeal on them. So, Doctor, the, you know, I mean, to, it's called CYA, and they figure they're going to play the game CYA. They got a chance to do it, and they do it all the way. They do it all the way. way. Now, we talked about this before. Now, that was a couple of years ago. Now, bring us up to what happened with this Canadian bank is going to take the fall of what sixty some million dollars, so the attorneys the don't go to jail. It's going to cost them. Because they came down to Florida, they set up a, a chain of banks around Florida here, and this Rothstein got involved with them because he said, I'm your new bank, I'm a lawyer, I'm a, I'm a big member of the Florida Bar, uh, you know, I'm on the Judicial Qualification, I'm on the Judicial Nomination Commission, and uh, I'm also on the Florida Bar Grievance Committee, so I have a, an awful lot of power, and I'm also a good friend of uh, Governor Charlie Crist. And uh, I made a $10 million donation to his, uh, uh, his cause. He's a fellow lawyer, and I know we got an open air view right to his office. So, now, this is all. The Canadian Bank, they felt there was quite assured that they were walking on the right uh, safe grounds. So they put all their trust in him. Now, everything you've and, said has uh, already, Bob, excuse me, everything you've just said has already been published in the Miami, in the Miami newspaper, right? Exactly. So exactly. you're not it's you're not pulling this out of the air. This is they can look. It's what's that? His, uh, website is called. His game is Rodney Class. K L A S S. Oh yeah. He's in North Carolina and he's published all the articles. I we have to put them on his website. The fellow's name is Rodney. R Rodney K -L -A -S -S. Class. A S S. R O D N E Y C L A S S. Oh K K L A S. It's K. Rodney Class. K L A S S. Oh yeah. K L A S S. Right. I've had him he's on the North show. Carolina. And I sent him all the original copies, so he took the original copies and pasted it on his website. So, we've got this Rothstein, who ran a Ponzi scheme, built his uh, synagogue buddies out of a billion plus dollars, and was hoping to build them for another two billion. He gets caught, but he's on the Judicial Appointment Committee for the state of Florida, is that right? The Judicial Nomination Commission, he's uh, one of the head people in the Judicial he's the one that's dominating all the judges in the state of Florida. And he's the one that so, okays nomination of judges, so he's got an awful lot of power. He had a lot of power, and, and he still has power even in prison. And had he not stole from some very wealthy Jewish people that took it real personal, <laughs> he'd probably still be getting away with it, wouldn't he? Exactly, exactly. It just happens to be a little slip up. I think it started when the murder of one of the lawyers, and, right. um, and they started asking some serious questions. And then they realized that uh, they, had a, they had a big fish on the line. And then when they wound up with uh, Rothstein, found out that there were, the federal government was coming to raid his office, he hired a private jet. And he took $20 million out of his uh, out of his vault. He put it on the jet and they flew down to Morocco to get away from the feds. But anyway, they made some uh, hard uh, threats on him, I guess. And he flew back and I understand he brought most of the money back with him. Most but, of the money uh, that no, we know of about. They arrested him right away, and he's been in prison ever since. Yeah, but the federal right. government is very, very upset with all the activities going on with this guy because they realized that they got a big fish on the line. Yeah, they got and a big fish. With, with myself, because I had been taking articles, and they, all these big fish like that, they, they live in private islands all around Fort Lauderdale and Palm Beach area and Miami area. They, live, they have their big mansions on there, and they have security guards at the gate before they get on the island. They have their big yachts on the island, and they do these big things, and they're all big yachts. But these guys are big crooks, and unless people stop them, unless people in this country open up their eyes and stop voting for lawyers in public office, we are not going to go any place. And, and the chances are we don't deserve to go any place because if you read the Federalist Papers, the original concept of the country about separation of powers, checks and balances. James Madison, one of the founding fathers, who was not a lawyer, by the way, he's a political scientist, he was not a lawyer, and he warns us 250 years ago when the Federalist Papers were written, he says very plainly, he said, if you're, it's called same hands control. And what he's saying is if the effective control of all three branches of government get under the single same hands control, then we will have tyranny and corruption, and there'll be nothing in the system to correct the problem. And that's in other words, in it's plain language, you could never go to the Nazi party and tell them they're killing Jews yeah. because that was the purpose. You wouldn't go to the slave owners and saying you're abusing slaves. That was the exactly. purpose. You wouldn't go to the Ku Klux Klan. You're saying you're abusing blacks. 
that was their purpose. So how, how do we in, how, system and courts. how do we indict all the attorneys? How do we get all these judges thrown in jail when they run the jails and the cops do their bidding? In oh, fact, the cops thing. are in on it. We can't do this. I mean, we'd have a, we'd have a, a, a massive, massive a civil war going on. But we can do one thing, and we can do it in a plain, legal manner. And then we, we get credibility this way. What you have to remember, the original Federalist Papers said separation of powers and checks and balances. Right, and we got and lawyers we got in all lawyer three branches. Who's making the laws, and we got lawyer judges adjudicating the laws, and then we got lawyer prosecuting force the laws. So, but but how do we how do we get there? Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. We have a corrupt form of government, and the only way we're going to change this thing is to vote lawyers out of public office. Vote lawyers out of office. Lawyer, Don't vote for lawyers. The legislative executive branch of government, because they've illegally taken over all of the judicial branch of government. We've lost any common sense in our legal system because it's run by judges and lawyers. And the only thing, the system of justice in the United States today is you're innocent until proven broke. Exactly. You're innocent in until proven cases. broke. That's what they want, all your money. That the system is corrupt and it's their fault. They've allowed the lawyers to take over exactly what the founding fathers did. Do not let this happen. Madison warns us 250 years ago yep. when he wrote the Federalist Papers. He said, if the effective control of all three branches of government get under the single same hand control. Well, thank you for that, Bob. Thank you for calling in from uh, Miami, Florida. We only got a few minutes left in the show, Bob, and I Look appreciate it. Website, if you have a chance, called constitutionalguardian.com, judicialaccountability.org, and disbarthefloridabar.com. <laughs> Disbarthefloridabar.com. <laughs> Disbar <laughs> yeah, thank you, Bob. Okay. Bye thank now. You. That was Bob Bertrand, who fought it out with the crooked attorneys there, and they got an organization to disbar the Florida Bar, and I interviewed the guy that started that. And here's a whole book saying, Oregon State Bar, out. Get rid of it. Whole thing. People want, people that have been through the system and know how rotten and corrupt, even some attorneys have told me they wish there was no bar because it forces them to do things that, yep. and cover up for crooked attorneys and judges that they don't want to. That's why Darren Mack shot the judge. He knew there was no justice in the system. And when you get to the point where you know there's no justice and you can't get justice, no matter how much money you spend on attorneys, they will not let you have justice. That's when they start shooting judges. And I want to mention what this book uh, disappeared from the San Francisco Library. It was the last, I think the last remaining copy, the document of how they were hanging judges after the uh, San Francisco earthquake that destroyed San Francisco. Judges and attorneys were making deals and steal because nobody knew where the lines were anymore. Everything had been sh shaken by the earthquake and then burned. The only building left was the San Francisco Mint was the only thing left standing, and everybody had to sort of figure out where everything was by that building. And the attorneys and judges were stealing from the people left and right, and it came a day where the cops had had enough of the crookedness. <laughs> That's what it's going to take. The, when the cops had had enough... And the people, militia, militia people, would get a warrant from a common law grand jury and say, go get that Stephen Pesky. He's a crooked judge. He's a crooked attorney. Arrest him and don't take him to their jail. Take him to our jail. We're going to give him a trial today. And they would, and they would hang him the same day or the next morning. <laughs> and they hung two or three judges. Now, all the records of the hanging of the attorneys and judges from the San Francisco rebuilding thing, that's all disappeared. They've taken it out of the libraries. They don't want you to know any of that. Yeah. Unless you force them to give you a jury trial for taking your kids, and unless you sue them immediately, you'll probably never see those kids yeah. till they're really old. I and then like they won't care about you anymore. Attorneys Above the Law by Dennis Schulte. And they are. And they are above the law. That's why they're criminals, because we're all supposed to be equal under the law. That's what the 1812 13th Amendment says. We're almost out of time. I'm going to go to uh, some music. I know we've... Say we've, one more quick thing. Yeah, quick, and then we're going to go well, to... Well, I found out over my 32 years of investigating the police that the thin blue line is the police, bail bondsmen, prosecutors, probation officers, attorneys, and judges. That's the thin blue line. The thin blue line is just not the police. It's all of them covering each other up 